Hello, and thank you for joining. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data solutions and services. Today we're going to talk about big data concepts applied to financial services. In the financial services sector, uh, there's a lot of challenges related to data management and warehousing, and big data solutions can help resolve this issue. Specifically, what we're going to talk today is we're going to talk a little bit about the modernization of the financial analytics structure. We'll get into a topic of gauging customer satisfaction using Spark as our machine learning engine. And then we'll also talk a little bit about the modernization of legacy financial applications. Before we really dive into the topic, it's important to understand the nuances and complexities of the modern financial analytics landscape. Financial institutions have a variety of data coming from multiple sources that in order to enable some of the more advanced functionality creating better products and services for their customers, they have to manage this information. So they could have a variety of information across many data warehouses siloed in different ways, and we have to bring this data together into a common landscape. So the mechanism that will do that is through big data and HDFS. So we'll take all this information and then we'll bring it into our enterprise data hub from which we will then create a new enterprise data warehouse in a big data environment. Once we have all this data brought together, then we can do some of the more interesting things from the analytics and the machine learning, which we're going to dive into. So once we have our data in the EDH and transformed into our EDW, we can then access the information for a series of robust analytics. For example, some of the analytics that we can use in the financial industry might be enhancements to the fraud detection mechanisms, so allowing for quicker or more real-time fraud-based detection, or anti-money laundering mechanisms. We can also leverage this for more accurate risk management of portfolios. Finally, we can also look for precise customer segmentation and develop a 360 customer-centric view of our targeted customers for development of products and services and increase the profitability for the financial organization. This is increasingly important to look into because as banks are becoming more competitive and as the industry is consolidating, the ability to gauge important customer metrics moves to the forefront. So traditionally, a financial institution may have a variety of products and services spanning many businesses. You know, it could be merchant services, it could be their credit card information, investments, internet banking, and the list goes on and on and on. To create a customer-centric view of the data, we have to bring this information together. And by bringing this information together, it will lend itself to more robust analytics. And as such, it could be a scorecard for a customer satisfaction. Um, it could be financial performance of the bank. But what's important is that all these pieces of information, when brought together, allow and enable for you to get more value out of your data. So let's talk a little bit about the structure and the technique in which we're going to advance the framework for financial services. So we have all of these different data sets being produced from a variety of sources. Well, somehow we have to get it into our HDFS layer. And by doing so, we will use different mechanisms. It could be Storm, it could be Scoop to move the data for the integration. Then after we do this, we have all of our information sitting in a common repository. From the common repository, we have to then pipe it into our analytics engine in order to do the machine learning and advanced analytics. However, before we get into that, I think it's important to know that traditionally this type of work has been done using a fuzzy logic. So you know, customer satisfaction, you know, traditionally could be measured by, you know, how many times somebody is utilizing a service. Well, that's, that's great, but that's not necessarily machine learning based approaches. So if we look traditionally at the business, it's based off of a few amount of attributes. Whereas in the modern big data environment, we can bring any attribute we want and the machine learning algorithms will decide which ones are relevant and which ones are not. And this difference is a giant leap forward in terms of your analytical capabilities and is enabled through big data platforms such as Spark. Another important aspect 
of this enterprise data hub that we've been talking about is the integration of all these disparate data sources into one common framework. So when we're looking at the data integration and transformation piece that feeds into the Spark engine, there's a lot more you can do with this data now having it in one centralized location. For example, financial executives believe that big, unstructured, and raw data analysis will provide important insights, mainly unknown to the bank and financial institutions. So by having this data in place, it allows for us to create a customer-centric point of view, which allows and enables a deeper understanding of customer needs and allows for more targeted campaigns. What I would like to do now is actually just kind of show you how this data flows through the Spark engine. So once, once we have our data, we're going to create a customer satisfaction model. And then we're going to show you how this information moves from Spark into our analytics-based dashboard. So the data set that we're looking at here is a customer satisfaction. And what we're going to do is we're going to, through the Spark engine, apply a logistic regression prediction model through this framework and using the MATLAB libraries. So what you're seeing here is the actual training of the algorithm. And then after it's done training, it's going to apply the results onto uh, new records. But a very important feature of a logistic regression that can be configured is that it can create a sort of risk profile. So you can look at you know, whether or not somebody is satisfied, yes or no, or you can leverage this to create risk bands of people who might be at risk. And the beauty of this algorithm is that it is looking at the full set of information and not just information that has been pre-selected and subjectively biased by the analysts. After we've run the information through our Spark engine, we can create dashboards and metrics. And we'll, we'll take a look at a sample dashboard that looks at attrition. But here we can see information related to customers that are at risk as determined by our logistic regression piped through Spark. So we can see now that the bank manager of this institution can target very specifically the customers that are most at risk for leaving the organization or, you know, or have a lower degree of customer satisfaction. So this showcases one powerful use case of how you can take information from a variety of sources bring it together in your big data ecosystem and to drive more advanced and robust analytics. As we had previously shown with the advanced analytics capabilities, we can supplement this with more conventional business intelligence dashboards. So we can take the data that we've prepared for our machine learning algorithms and push this to the analysts and the end users of the information to derive conventional business insights. So what we're showing here is an example of what a business intelligence dashboard could look like in the financial industry, drawing from our 360 customer-centric view. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data services and solutions. We want to be your one-stop big data helpline. If you're interested in our products and services, please feel free to check us out at www.metascale.com or contact us through the telephone number or email address listed below. Thank you very much and have a nice day.